Hello true believers, welcome back in this new series of videos going into the depths of transport issues and proposed solutions in the Victorian state election in 2018. We will look at projects announced by both sides of politics and we will see whether they actually reduce congestion and enable to get people where they need to go. For today's video, we will cover the Suburban Rail Loop, announced by Fluttershy. It's the most expensive transport project in Australian history, and it's roughly 100 kilometers of rail route, two-thirds underground, and it circles around Melbourne suburbs. It's a very visionary project, and it will have many, many benefits to come, which makes it really important not to make any mistakes because it will cost a lot of money in the process. Melbourne needs a multimodal approach when it comes to planning projects. Currently the politicians are just focused on roads and heavy rail in Melbourne. We need to look more than just that. Many cities not just invest in roads, not just invest in rail, they also invest in other modes of transport that are sustainable, such as cycling, uh, better buses, and also bringing light rail back. We need to take advantage of these other modes, otherwise it's not going to be a very good time just investing in just two modes of transportation, and one of which isn't very sustainable. Because I really do care about Melbourne's transport. I really do. And I'll be honest with you people, I couldn't stop myself <laughs> looking into the Suburban Rail Loop. It is really, really interesting stuff. <music> Need to see whether this project is the top priority or not because it might not even be the, the, the project that should happen first. There are many other projects that do need to happen. <clears throat> The one project that I did talk about, which is very important, is the second metro tunnel. This major project should have been the next priority in the heavy rail network, but seems to be pushed down the priority list. I think the metro 2 should have happened before the suburban rail loop. It really needed to come first because it's investigated heavily over the past few years. And it has been noted as a key project by Infrastructure Victoria. And you're thinking, well, Suburban Rail Loop's pretty good, and I like the Metro too. Why don't we just build both? Well, yeah, that would be optimal. But as, as being the most practical, not really. You prefer to stage these works, not to stack them on top of each other because they're very, very big projects and they, they do cost a lot to the budget. If you want to go risky, go for it, but it's likely to cause more issues than it's going to solve by overspending. The suburban rail loop is not really a loop. It's it's an arc, but I can I can see why they called it a loop. Please don't put comments down telling me we should have the loop connect under the Port Phillip Bay. Honestly, you don't want to put a rail line through the uh, bay. That doesn't make any sense. So please don't bother with silly suggestions like that. Otherwise, I'm just going to get a little bit flustered. <laughs> uh, don't ask it that, please. <laughs> to make it clear, we'll just call this loop the the Metro 3 project. Uh, Daniel Bowen and the PTOA calls it that. I'm happy calling it that. It's... You know, uh, it's easier than calling it the suburban rail loop. Um, let's talk about the loop itself. The the western half was put in the last minute. I can tell you know, there wasn't really much stations on that end of the line. Trust me, I think it says in the documents somewhere about consulting on that western half of the loop. So they might add stations um, when they get to that section of the loop. 
especially when the demand will increase over there as the western suburbs develop more. That's why the eastern section is done first because the, the eastern suburbs have been fully developed and that's why the demand is there to support the eastern portion of the loop, which is why the western portion is left last. It's not because, you know, the western suburbs have safe seats, nothing to do with that. It's some just logic um, put into that priority. I don't think you should add too many stations on that Metro 3 because if you put too many stations, it's going to slow down the travel time quite a bit. So the most stations I'd add would be just one between Southland and Clayton. And I'll add probably about three stations on the western half of the project. As well as that, the Melbourne Airport Rail Link via Sunshine does make more sense because of this, this Metro 3. And it, it does make sense because now you can connect everything together. But I'm not really sure whether this uh, Metro 3 project would it would it like use the same tracks as the airport rail link or would it be a separate system? I'm not quite sure if it will share the tracks or not between Sunshine and the airport. I don't know. Too early to tell, to be honest. Uh, the light rail plans to Roeville now make more sense too because it creates that spider web network connecting all the different forms of transport in the Monash precinct. As for any government projects, yes, the, the proposal is really positive we have lots of optimistic goals, they're meeting, and there's a lot of stats that you can't really prove. Cost, time frames, and benefits, it's it's a little bit too early. I feel like it's eh, an election promise right here, but I don't know, it needs more planning. It just needs to be figured out first. <music> to be honest, I'm a little bit biased, tad biased on this project. I'm a little bit positive that it would actually do revolutionize the way everyone travels around the, the city and make it you know less centralized so people can work in the suburbs it does it, the idea does sound reasonable it has some clear objectives that it's trying to achieve in its documents like connecting all these economic hubs outside the CBD of Melbourne uh, with a high capacity transit link. We all know that this project will take a long time and it will cost a lot of money. But is it just fairy on toast? Or is it an actual project that can actually happen? Well, 50 billion divided over 30 years, well, over that period of time, it's achievable. And with federal money, it makes it even easier. Although heavy metros are very significant to Melbourne and to other cities, there is an issue in Melbourne where we're just putting it in one form of transportation and not putting investments in other forms. We cannot forget that there's a tram network that we have. We've got a bus network that's really, really lacking in investment. It's like every one hour sometimes. And on weekends, the buses are just completely useless. Um, cycling is also neglected too. Most of the cycling network is incomplete and it's mixed in with traffic and it's so dangerous. And uh, the tram network, it's slow. It's not separated by the cars. Most of it is mixed in with the roads. It's not separated well enough. They actually do reduce congestion in connecting with the rail system. And connecting with the road system. It's why our, it's why there's so much congestion because people can't use those other modes and they're forced to use cars. That's why about over 50% of Melbourne is using cars. Not enough investment in these areas and apparently we're the fastest uh, growing city. Yeah, you know, we're kind of screwed if, if investment is just on one project not on various of other projects we need to we need to look at a multimodal approach to transport planning and that is very key in sustaining our growth Ooh. 
Thank you, everybody, for watching this video. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to continue to, to see my content. And, you know, I'm always here to talk to you guys or whatever. I don't really mind. You go chat to me. Uh, chat to me on Twitter. Chat to me here um, in the comment section. And I'm happy to answer all your questions. So, thank you. I, I love you guys. Um, you, you're awesome for sticking with me.